that uh, this would have been impossible if it wasn't for uh, my drummer, my computer genius drummer guy, uh, Justin Robinson, who um, I com was complaining about the, the latency between the drum kit and the computer, which is not a, it's only a few feet away, and it, it has a, uh, a USB cord that uh, goes all the way over there. But, <clears throat> I said, it's, the latency is bad. He goes, well, are you using, uh, do you have a USB 3 port? port? And I said, I don't know. He goes, well, look in your, about this system. So I look, and yeah, sure enough, I have a USB 3 port, but I was plugged into a USB 2 port, okay? So there is a big difference between 3 and 2 in terms of speed. So once I plugged it into 3, I could get a realistic uh, sounding drum track you know, that it didn't drive me crazy. The other thing about it is, I am listening to a combination of the Roland kit in my headphones and the uh, computer's track, okay? And the reason I'm doing that is because if I was to listen to the drums on the computer, it would, it's still latent. The Roland brain sends the signal right to the earphones right in time, perfectly in time. So I'd rather hear that, hear myself playing in time to the track and know that I'm doing it right and then I can go over there and adjust it however I need to. But, uh, and what I'm gonna do with this one, well, I'll tell you in a minute, okay, when we get to the next phase of it. All right, so over here, you will see this, this jack here is uh, plugged into the USB 3 port, my Mac Pro. Whoa, wow, that gets hot. Yeah, uh, I hear they make them not, so they don't get quite so hot anymore, but uh, this one is uh, hella hot. I'll show you how I do this. Now, here's the two drum tracks I just did. Well, let me just play this a little bit to see what it sounds like. I'm gonna solo these three drums. Okay, so that sounds pretty cool, but what I'm going to do is, I, I they're all the same snare drum. That would never happen in real life. So I have to change the snare drum. Here we have the, this one is a DW Edge. We're going to try for, search for instrument. We got the... I want a big fat snare drum. 14, uh, five, five and a half, six and a half. Oh, that's pretty good, sonar. Or tandem. Carbon fiber body. Brady. Oh, listen to that. That sounds so, so much like some weird thing. Let's see what that sounds like when I play it. I like that. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing on the other. The 
see what it looks like in the edit view. So that's, uh, that's where we're at with the song, and I hope you enjoyed seeing my process. Uh, I, there's probably stuff I left out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. But right now we're going to go to the, the segment where I answer your questions, or I talk about your questions, or your comments. So, see you later. Okay, so now I'm going to answer some questions. Wicked Fester. Paul Glintz and Rob GS all had questions about how I record my electric drums. I, I had a thing saying recording apartment drums, and I think maybe they wanted to see specifically how I how I do it. Uh, it's a little tedious, but maybe I can uh, do a uh, uh, in-depth uh, example of how I do it. But basically. Um, and, oh, and there was another question. One of these guys asked me, is our electric drums the future? Are they better than uh, acoustic drums? And I have to say, no way. No way, at least at this point. I would love it if I could actually get everything that, that out of an electric drum that I can get out of an acoustic drum, but it's just not possible. There is a lot of subtlety. You know, you have 127 levels of, uh, of uh, intensity uh, in, uh, in MIDI, which is what we have to, you know, I mean, I don't know if, if I use the Roland sounds, I would have to be much better at capturing them. And uh, I, I do like having control over the different notes. So I record in MIDI, but that's, uh, that has several uh, uh, drawbacks. Number one is the latency that you get when you when you play, and it, you play, and it comes out a second later or a microsecond later. Even even a microsecond can can affect how you uh, how you uh, react to that. The other thing is that. Uh, uh, there's something about playing with earphones, which is a challenge, and I never really realized it until uh, I was talking to Richie Castellano about how he does his live stream, and he said, if you play with earphones, you're not feeling the sound. You don't feel the sound on your skin. You don't feel the, you know, it, it moving your body. And that is a crucial part to the live experience when you're playing live and you're playing a live instrument. So there's also that with doing acoustic, trying to, trying to do something in your apartment, you're trying not to make a lot of noise so that you don't you know, drive your neighbors crazy. By the way, uh, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but when I did that episode, I got to meet my downstairs neighbor. Yeah, she came, she rang the bell, and I, I, I heard the bell ring, I went to the door, I said, let me guess, you're my downstairs neighbor. She goes, yeah, I am, my name is, you know, and I told her who I was, and uh, I said, I'm driving you crazy. She goes, yeah, I'm working on my PhD, so it's kind of hard to concentrate with all that noise. So we worked something out where I could play, but, uh, you know, uh, so you're you're trying to play in a, an apartment, not make a lot of noise, but yet uh, to have the true the true experience, you need to make a lot of noise. If you don't like loud, then you really probably shouldn't play the drums. I mean, uh, yes, there is a lot of subtlety, which is why electric drums aren't the greatest. You know, when you when you play a side stick on the electric drums, it doesn't sound like a side stick. It really doesn't. You have very limited options with the side stick. So, uh, and that can be a great, great technique to use. So, I look forward to the 
you know, getting in the studio and working with real drums again. But in recording, there is some advantages to electric drums. The fact that I can change uh, a, a, a drum fill because I'm very picky about how I like my drum fills. And uh, sometimes I can just, you know, lay it down and it's great. But other times I, I lay it down, I think it's great. And then later I go, oh, you know, if I'd played that other Tom Tom there, you know, or I don't know, this is too predictable how this goes. It sounds like some other fill that I played, you know, which I shouldn't be, uh, uh, shouldn't feel bad about that I played the same fill twice in a song or something like that because drummers do that all the time but uh, yeah sometimes I just want to change things up and that's just my the nature of uh, me so Anyway, I'm sitting here in the rain, waiting. And, uh, well, I hope uh, this has uh, been helpful. 